Hey, Jonathan here at Topsaw. Today's video, I'm going to go over how to CNC a hangboard for rock climbing. Multiple pockets, different depth, different widths. Um, how to prep your wood, how to set up the CNC router to run the board. Um, Where every CNC project starts is you always want to start with your material to figure out what you're working with. So we're going to work with a uh, three quarters alder. It's actually 13 sixteenths thick. This is bought at a Auburn Hardwoods, fantastic um, hardwood supplier. You really get what you pay for with lumber. So if you go to a hardwood supplier, um, they really produce or they keep in stock higher quality lumber rather than you know a, a, a large box store so this is alder that you know they're random width and they're usually about 12 foot long we're going to cut two of these off and i'm going to they're about 20 long so i cut a little wider than that i'll cut it like 21 or so and then i'll cut a second 21 and then after I, I have a rough cross cut length i come over here to the table saw on a table saw, I rip to get surfaced on all sides, and that way it's a lot easier to square it up on the CNC. After they're surfaced on the two sides, then I go back to the crosscut saw, the miter saw, and I crosscut the edges and make sure those are perpendicular to the parallel edges. So then I'm surfaced all sides. I'm going to use a lot of clamps and glue up, let that glue sit for overnight. I'm going to unclamp and then I have my material stock all set up. So I have the dimensions, the thickness, uh, I know how hard the wood is and what I'm working with. So that's step one is getting your material sorted out. And then step two is figuring out what tool you're going to use. So we're going to use this large 4x8 uh, Forest Scientific CNC router. This is a really nice tool. So I know how to post process uh, my CNC file because this is going to be a techno step file. So that's an important thing to note. You got to know that before you even uh, start drawing in your CNC software. The other thing I'm going to figure out too is what cutter I'm going to use. So because I want to go so deep, I'm going to use a half inch wide router bit. That's a two spiral flat end bit. It's flat at the end. So the pockets will be flat on the bottom and then the there are flutes. These right here, these little spirals are flutes, so there's one and two. So it's a two flute, half inch um, spiral bit. So I figure out what tool I'm going to post process to, what cutter I'm going to use, what stock I'm going to have. And then once I have all that figured out, then my next step is to figure out how I'm going to fixture down to the tabletop. And for this project, I'm just going to drill pilot holes and screw it down. And those screw holes to hold it down will be the same screw holes I'm going to mount it with. So what I want to make sure I do is I want to make sure those hold down screws that are getting screwed down into the sacrificial board on the tabletop, um, those are 16 inches apart. Okay, from there we'll go into the computer. So I have a notebook with me out in the shop on that notebook. I have the dimensions of my stock, what kind of material it is, the thickness, what kind of tool I'm going to be using, and also the CNC, what my post is. So right here, this is Mastercam X9. I start right here by selecting my machine type. So I'm going to use a router, and specifically I have to post to a router that's going to go to the machine, so that's Techno Servo. And once I do that, it pulls up my property manager. Then in my property manager, I set my stock, and I set that dimension to the dimension of my materials. The other thing that's really important to note before you even start drawing is where are you going to zero the bit. So right here, I'm zeroing the bit right in the center of my board on top, so all my cut depths will be negative down into the board. I'm going to draw cross here across my board to find that center. And I could start it anywhere, but the center is kind of ideal because it gives you a larger room for margin of error. Okay, so one more time, let me run through those steps. Step one is really identify what materials you're going to use. Step two, what CNC router you're going to use. Step three, what cutter are you going to put on that router. 
And then, then after you have those three pieces figured out, then you come in and use the computer and you identify all those things. You're going to identify what stock you're using, the dimensions of the stock, where you're going to start that cutter, and then as you tool path that, you're going to select that half inch bit. So everything's all kind of coordinated, and that also actually includes before you start running that part, all of those things have to be coordinated. So you got to bring that bit to the center of your stock and zero it out in the center of your stock on top, and then make sure you got your X and Ys correct that the board's on there along the X-axis. Um, so it's not hard, but you do have to put all three pieces together, your material stock, your computer, and then running Okay, it. so this whole climbing board is drawn in MasterCam X9. Uh, not the easiest CNC software, but I really like it a lot. This is all called a geometry. I could turn off the tool path right here. So that, that's the geometry. After you've drawn the geometry, then you go to tool path it. That's up here under tool path. And then cut it out. And then before you process it, you, you go to a verify. Um, I usually like to watch an isometric view. And this is going to show you what it's going to run like. Different colors or different tool paths. You can move it around and see. Check the depth. You're looking for a couple of things that it's inside your boundaries that you want. You're also looking at the depth of cut, which is how far it goes down on a single pass. So it doesn't break the bit are correct. And you can watch that again. I'll slow it way down and then replay it. And you can play any part of it. It's at a slower speed. So you can see there are multiple passes and then a finishing pass. And then the file saved. Then after it's saved, what you want to do, these are two separate processes. You save the file and then you post it, which is G1, which means convert to um, G code. For a techno step machine, it's going to be an NC file. I'll save it on the desktop. And now it's taking all of this vector information and using the MasterCam proprietal code expert and post-processing this to numeric code. And that's the numeric code that the machine's actually going to run. We're going to take that numeric code out into the shop, and that's the actual code we're going to run on the machine. So let's go out and run it. Okay, I took that G code and I loaded it on the computer that actually drives this router. I did that through a flash drive. Then I fixtured the board down to that sacrificial tabletop with screws and drew those pencil crosshairs. I then zeroed it in the center of that board with the Z of zero as well, and those are the coordinates getting run right there. So there's that half inch bit, and you can see it's cutting the third pocket now. The order it's cutting those pockets is dependent on the way you program them. So my first tool path were the two pockets together. It is currently on the second tool path, which is that third pocket. She's going down multiple times. It's going down in a depth of cut that depth of cut is how far it'll go on a single pass. And the rule of thumb there is half the diameter of the cutter. So that's a half inch flat end mill. So it's probably going down 0.4 uh, per pass. You see the chips coming out at this um, time lapse of tenfold. Those chips are actually a pretty ideal size. There is an actual optimum chip size. And that optimum chip size is dependent on your depth of cut, your feed rate, your plunge rate, and your spindle speed. And you do those calculations to get that optimum chip. And then here it is all finished, uh, retracting that cutter away from it. And you can see the cuts are pretty clean and there are no burns. The fact that there are no burns on the board and the fact that it's a clean cut mean that I do have pretty good settings on there. Right now this is a small handheld router just to put roundovers on it. I could have done that on the CNC but just as quick to do it this way. You can see though in that first pocket in the bottom left those burns, those burns are put on because that handheld router is getting moved too slowly. So the way you dissipate heat with a router, whether CNC or handheld, is you transfer the heat to the chip, and then that chip takes the heat away. So when you pause, when you're cutting, there are no chips being created, um, and that's kind of a problem.
One of the beauties of a CNC router is it doesn't pause in the corners like you do with a handheld router. So after those edges have the round over orbital sander with like 150 grit going up to 120 grit just to smooth it out a little bit. Uh, and then those burn marks have to get hand sanded out. How's it feel with the round over on the inside? The round over feels a lot better than compared to this. Sharp edge. Yeah. Nice. Beautiful. Kind of three. So here's the first made hangboard. It's over a door frame, which is cool because you could keep the door closed and use it. Or if you open up the door, it makes it even harder. Um, you can see the pockets here. I think those are three inches wide. It turns out they're actually a little too narrow to get your fingers in. And then the shallow one here is almost impossible. So then it went to another prototype. Let me show you that one. This one's 20 inches by 8 inches. It's 3 quarter inch alder. And it's kind of two boards glued together there. Alder's a nice wood. Uh, and actually hardwood isn't three quarters, it actually comes to 16th full, so it's 13 sixteenths by 13 sixteenths. So that'll give you 26 sixteenths or one and five eighths. So the overall thickness of this board is one and five eighths. These um, pockets are now, these pockets are four inches by one inch. And then the depths are like these two right here. Opposing alternate ones are the same. So those two are the same. Those two are the same. These two are the same. These two are the same. This one's come out a lot better. When it was all done, used uh, just a small micro router to round the edges and round that top edge. Okay, so this is one and a half and one and a half. So this is one and five sixteenths. The matching one, one and five sixteenths. One and a quarter, one one and a quarter, one, and then coming down to three quarters, one and a half, or just a half, sorry, this is a half, and this one was so shallow that we couldn't get a round over on it, so it's a sharp edge. You could pull up on that, especially if you could get your thumb under here, and then three quarters and a half. So that's kind of the, after making a few of these and testing them and trying them, the best layout when you do mount it on the wall, you want to make sure you catch a couple studs. So want to go longer than 16. So, you know, you're really going to crank on that thing. Um, hopefully this will help you train. Uh, make your climbing a little better. If you like the video, hit like and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. This is Jonathan Topsaw. All things wood, from tree work to woodwork. So I appreciate you watching these videos. And I'm pleased with the way this one came out.